this video will show you how to write the pi file which we control the differential drive car a differential drive car has two wheels with motors on both wheels if you spin the motors at the same speed then the car will will go straight if you spin them at different speeds it will turn left or right depending on which which uh, motor is spinning faster with respect to the other one in this case what we'll do is we'll uh, use the template mojoko pi and edit it to control the two motors by using data dot control and here we'll set a target velocity since we defined the velocity servo mj step is by default in the code what this does is basically takes the simulation to do a integration and move forward and once you have done integration we can query and get the position of the joint in this case we'll try to get the position of the free joint and then we'll attach a, a site and then query the position of the site i will provide this template mujoko pi file let's make a copy of it let's rename that as this drive okay, and open it and the first thing we do is we include this particular model so let's include that model differential drive and then we can see if this works by using script and run script or uh, or by just going and uh, doing the shortcuts in, this, in the case of mac it's command for size okay so that's the car okay now we want perhaps want to see this view and so what we'll do is in order to do that we'll change the view options so for that change the this camera config to one uh increase the speed increase the time so it stays simulated for a longer time change the view to whatever you want it to be so here i'm adjusting it the way i want using my mouse uh, i think this looks okay then close this if you did this then you will see that it actually prints the camera position here copy that so control c or command c on a mac uh, then locate the location where we have cam right here and paste this over there and now let's just round this up 90 45 and then camera let's just make it 30. so now we can run this and see what if it does actually change the camera position so Run the script, and then we see that it is actually set to the position we want it. Stop this, change the time back to 10, and then change the camera configuration to zero. Okay, now that we have adjusted the view, let's control the seat. For that, we let's test the controller. Now we should first try to understand where exactly this controller is called. The main loop which runs the code is right here, this while loop. Okay, so it runs the MJ step, which is forward integration uh, within we basically have the controller installed as a controller using by setting the mgpb underscore control what this does is basically at every simulation step it calls the controller gets in the control values and then integrates forward so it's already done for you you don't have to do anything with the controller over here all you have to do is tell it the right thing to do here so let's comment our pass and then uh, the way to control the motors is to say data dot cpr zero this is the left velocity servo the actuator and then so that's setting the speed and then we do same same thing for the right one so cprl let's say 10 cprl1 equals zero so once we have set this we can run the script and then you can see the car is actually turning and moving forward. So we've got, we have changed the speed. Now let's try to query the position of the free joint. For that, what I need to do is I need to access a variable called data.qpose. So data.qpose zero is going to give me the first degree of freedom to the free join which happens to be the x plus x position similarly there's data dot q pose one and data dot q pose q pose two so let me print all that
x y z position of the freedom and this and then you can see that it actually prints the x y z position it's not very it's not very interesting here so i'll comment it out the next thing i want to do is plot the rotation of that now that comes from the next three uh, variables q pose three four five and six now there are four variables for rotation because Mujoko uses quaternions. So we need to convert the quaternions to angles so that it's easier for us to interpret those values. So I have some piece of code which will do this for you. Um, I'm just going to copy paste from my notes. So first we go up and include, uh, we, we get a particular package called Skippy and we get the rotation uh, module from it. Next, I'm going to I've created a function which basically takes the quaternion, the Mujoko quaternion, then converts back to the Skippy quaternion. It turns out that the way Skippy uses the quaternion is different from Mujoko, so I need to do some rearrangement of the quaternion. Then I convert that to a rotation matrix, and then once I get that, I can get the Euler angle in degrees. So with this code, all I need to do is uh, essentially call this inside my code. So I go down and just here, I have to call it. So let's what equals NP array. So now it's going to be data dot Q pose zero, data dot with three. four, five, and six. So there are, as I said, four numbers. This is assigned to quad. I then pass it to the function, and then uh, it returns the Euler angles. And then the Euler angles is going to have three components, the x, y, z. In this case, the yaw corresponds to rotation about the z axis, so that's the yaw. So I'm going to say print yaw equals uh, Euler, is the third component. So let's run this and see what we get. So as this car turns, we see that the angle is changing. So it's 60 degrees and now 80 degrees, 90 degrees. Okay, so yes, that's how you get the yaw. The last thing I would like to do is I like to attach a site and then print the location site. So for that, I need to first create a site. And I want to create the site on the chassis. So what I'll do is write um, right below the box. I'll create a site. Site name equals marker. Position, let's put it at 0, 0, 0 for now and then move it as we want it. And then size equals 0 0.1. Now to visualize this, I recommend opening the Mujoko app. Drag and drop this. And then, so it's created right at the center of um, the geometry of the box. And then if I want to move it, uh, I first need to look at the frames. So go to rendering, so frames 40. And you can see that, uh, the box has, I believe, the we need to move it along the z axis. So x cross y z. So I think the z points in this direction. So I need to move it. Maybe perhaps I want to move it forward. So I'll move it down to point one. So let's change this to point one along the z axis and then do reload. And you can see it actually moved in front. Okay, so that's my site. Uh, if you're doing some kind of control and you want to track this, this this will help you because the code will have access to it. Now, before we can access it, we need to create a sensor for the site. So go here, create a tag for sensor. Sensor, 
and end it. And here is where I have to access it. So what I do is uh, I want the position of the sensor. So I use frame pose as my keyword. Object type is a site. And then uh, I also need to say what which site is it because you can have multiple sites in your page. So this site was called marker. So I'm going to say marker and then end. Let's reload this to be sure that it works. It works, so we can close this. Uh, now that we have the site, we can now access the site. So I'm going to call in the year I don't want to know it, and say print uh, data dot site underscore expose here. Let's run this. And then. What it does is it basically prints the X, Y, Z position of the site. Uh, what you can note here is that the Z position doesn't change because the height remains fixed. So the X and Y must change. Okay. Now you might be wondering where did I get this Q pose and site expose from? Here, uh, try to search for Q pose. Okay, here it is. In fact, it is in MJ data. In, within MJ data, we have uh, Q pose, so that gives the position of the degrees of freedom. As I sh showed, uh, there are nine degrees of freedom, and then the first seven correspond to the free joint, and two for the free joint. So you can access them here. They similarly, there is CPRL, which I use to control, and there are NU cross points. Here we have two actuators, so you can set zero and one, as I set it in the code. And then here we have a, a site expose. Which gives me the position of the site, and that's n site cross three. Since there's one site, it's going to have three variables. If you have two sites, it will be two times three, so it will be six numbers, and so on. 